Recently, there's been this major push to release Larry Hoover. Mm -hmm. Let's go to a clip. In the 1990s, the Gangster Disciples were the most powerful gang in Chicago. Larry Hoover became leader of the Gangster Disciples everywhere. Larry Hoover's leadership style was very direct. He gave orders. They were followed. Larry Hoover ordered the murder of a young man in 1973. He had another member of the gang shoot that person six times in the head, leave his body in an alley. He could stop a fight in war at any time he wanted. He could also snap his fingers and make it happen. I was given the gangster disciple case, and DEA nicknamed it Operation Vacuum for Hoover Vacuums. The United States Marshal told us that Larry Hoover had hired somebody from Los Angeles, a crip, to kill me and or the case agent. Ultimately, Judge Lyndon Weber sentenced Hoover to life in the federal prison system. At some point, you have to say this crime is so serious that the system can't tolerate it. I think the fact that we're sitting here discussing Larry Hoover today is just a sign of how significant he is. How significant he is. Now, I just want everyone to know that when we talk about our criminal justice system, our criminal justice system is supposed to be used to correct the individual that's serving time, whether they're going to be there for life and never getting out. Um, but it has to be a restorative justice type of model. Otherwise, it's not working in, um, in, in the capacity that it should. So I made a request to visit Larry Hoover. Now, not to say that I'm advocating for Larry Hoover to get out, but it's clear that Larry Hoover got some answers about this activity of criminal enterprise in Chicago. There's no doubt he can help. Now, he could help from in jail or he, he can help from out of jail, but right now he's in. And what do you guys think? Should somebody be talking to him? Somebody should definitely be talking to him. Um, I mean, here's a man though, you know, he he used this this gift, this power in his younger year, in his youth for the underworld. But clearly he has this influence, he has that gift. Not everybody has that to influence masses of people and especially young people. So I most definitely think that they should talk to him. They should use him. And it sounds like he wants to do good. He wants to help. He wants to talk to these young people. I mean, he, he was trying to mend the rift between Kanye and, and Drake to the point that they gave a concert in his honor. Um, so it's hard to he, call for his release. Calling for his release, but they, uh, they didn't really talk about his release in the concert. But they wanted to show that that's what, that's the they came together. The no, it was supposed to be about that, but they didn't talk that, about it in the concert, though. That concert was all about one thing, and that was coming together to make sure that that he got released. And that's what you know. I you know I know L.A. is your, <laughs> is your town, but I'm just debating you here. I also know that there's another clip that we had, I don't know if we were able to play it, but he was so powerful that no one would turn on him. There's the, a new, there's this rapper named Lil Durk. Mm -hmm. His father spent 26 years in prison because he would not turn on Larry Hoover. That's the type of um, power he had. We got that clip. So you give us Larry Hoover, we put you back on 26, and you'll work for us. I went in my pocket, pulled out the car to my lawyer, slid it on the table, and said, call my lawyer. If I'm being old, 26 years later, here I am, free man, 
without telling, without compromising, without being someone I'm not. Rats, stool pigeons, you know, people who tell things to get out. You know, this is the type of life. We don't live this type of life. You know, I'm a Muslim first and foremost. No doubt about it. But even in Islam, we don't believe in telling. We don't believe in rats. We don't believe in stool pigeons. So for someone to try to tell you to tell on somebody else to save your own neck and all this, you get in this thing, you hold your own weight. You know, that's how people got to look at it. I'm in this. Then I hold my own weight. You don't bring nobody else into this. You don't tell them nobody else to save your own skin. Get out of it. That's not your lifestyle. That's not what you're about. Get up out of it. You know? When the thing hits, when it hit, the impact come in, you continue to stand strong. And you continue to go down for what you believe in. And don't bring nobody else down with you. You know, I like that love. I think it's um, Jeezy. Um, I like the little saying he's saying. In his little rap song, if you ever get caught up, don't mention my name. You know, that's just one of the slogans I like. You know, and that's one thing people should take as a hand of You get jammed up, don't mention my name. Don't mention nobody's name. Just do you, you know. The white man, it looked like you got something to say. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I do. Um, I, I don't, you know. Um, uh, I'm not sure I agree with, 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 with big dirt, uh, there, I, I can admire him for his steadfastness. Uh, but, you know, could, you, you know, you, you know, he said, you know, don't turn on what you believe in or, or something like that. You know, it's one thing to say, all right, well, I, you know, I killed some people and I deserve to be punished. It's another thing to talk about like you believe in it. You believe in what? In oppressing your own community? You believe in what? In selling crack to your own people? You believe in what? In killing some young black men so that the KKK can celebrate? What What is it that you believe in? What What are these principles of a hoodlum of a thug that you're upholding. Uh, you know, it's not like you were out there feeding children. You were killing people and distributing poison and profiting from it. Okay. And so I, I don't think it makes you a big man to say, well, I'm, you know, I, I went into this life. I'm going to, you know, at some point, and, and frankly, if that's your perspective, and I don't know that that's Larry's perspective because that's not who we heard. But if it's this guy's perspective that he's still all about that life, then he should stay exactly where he is. Well, I have no sympathy for him. Well, I don't. I don't think I, it's honorable to to protect murderers. You know, and and now we have to ask ourselves about why the clearance rate is not higher. And these cases where black babies are being killed, black people are being killed. And we ask ourselves over and over and over and over again, why do they catch people that kill white people, but not catch people that kill black people? Well, there's some to it that, you know, there's a code of conduct in certain communities where we don't snitch. And you heard it from Big Dirk. Yeah, but do you not snitch because you're afraid that they're going to come and kill your child if you snitch? Or, you know, because that I can understand. If well, I need, they, you know, they, I, you, you, you and I, Rep, if we, if we needed to kill someone to protect our daughter, uh, we probably would. Right. I, I, I wouldn't absolutely. think twice about it. But but the point is, is, is you know who what are you what are you protecting you 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 know there's no the code of conduct on on not snitching is i think i i don't know i i i i think that's akin to uh, asserting that you have absolute gun rights 
Okay, at some point, you somebody's got to recognize that the mistake has been made, and the mistake needs to be corrected. So, I think that if your whole life is about breaking the rules, breaking the law, kill, you know, it's so funny to me. You're okay with murder, but you're not okay with telling on someone. Oh wow! So you know, the common good is—is is it? Uh, we got to remember the common good. More children die when we don't catch the criminal. Now, we have to make sure that me being who I am, I will always stand for the truth. And the truth is, yes, if it wasn't for a system that's run by the rich white male, there would be no, no, guns and drugs infiltrated in these black communities. None, because we've seen it taken out of communities and now they are what you call developing. They are, uh, what's the word that they use for um, development when you push people out, gentrified. Gentrification. Yes. So that's happening. And so the powers to be could starve the West and South Side communities of the poison of guns and drugs if they want it. Now, let's go to free will. We have to realize the cards that were dealt and make a choice, are we gonna to continue to uh, take the bait and die as a race of people? Because we know, and we say it all the time, the white man is putting the drugs and guns in our community. And Mark always say, you're doing the job of the KKK. Well, it's time for us to stand up and reject Satan reject the guns and the drugs and reject the criminal activity in these communities. That's what I'd say. So if everyone, well, one, I'm telling, if you kill some kids, I'm telling. I'm just put that out there. If I know you killed some kids, I'm telling. <laughs> okay. Um, but the whole, the whole, the whole snitching thing, you know, with the drugs and the guns, if everyone snitches up and follows the money, are, are people afraid of who's actually at the top of the, the food chain and snitching on that person? If you snitch on that, that top person, is anything really going to happen? Because many believe that it's the government itself. That's that's oh, making right, money. Right. That's making money off of what's happening in Chicago, L.A., New York, Miami, Urban you know, Atlanta. Yes. You know. Yes. So how how the how does the snitching really really work? I mean, and if you're a black man in jail, who are who are you protecting when you're not snitching? Mm. You know who who are you taking the proverbial bullet for? Big Dirk. Yes. Who are you really taking it for? Because I think and, it's and, bigger than Larry Hoover. And and by the way, you know, I I actually uh, don't subscribe to the whole government profits thing because I think government profits the most when it collects taxes, and I think crime uh, and the black market. Um, lose the government taxes. So I think the government profits more when there's um, peace, but I certainly think there are others who profit more when there's crime. Uh, for example, people who r run private prisons profit handsomely mm -hmm. when there's crime. And they just assume everybody would be locked up for life because that guarantees they're going to run out all their rooms. Mm. Okay. 
So I, uh, you know, so y- you and I, Malika, we should talk sometime because I, uh, I, cause I'm, I'm sort of halfway with you because I, I think there's definitely a, a system in place there. I don't know that I would, you know, frankly, and, and I don't want to hurt, uh, the elected officials feelings here. Frankly, I don't think government is that competent that they could carry out a, uh, really sophisticated, a decades long criminal enterprise without somebody somewhere <laughs> screwing it up because that would be like the, the, the thing that the government got the most right ever. Um, but I, I, I well, I'll shut up. I see the rep wants to speak. Mal- why Malika is right. There is this thing called the war on drugs that started a lot of this, that drugs were infiltrated in to America and Ronald Reagan knew about it. He knew about it. And these drugs came into the neighborhoods and more black people were incarcerated from the war on drugs as a result of government making deals with other nations. And so if we truly want to um, take the responsibility off of government, then government must stop the infiltration of drugs and guns in these neighborhoods. Otherwise, it's clear that the government is doing exactly what it seems to be doing. And that's, you know, I think there's this Jim Crow law, the new Jim Crow. We mm. got it. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to go to this other clip. This other clip that we're talking <laughs> about is, do we go out, people, and have a conversation with people like Jeff Ford and Larry Hoover. But here's Larry Hoover right here. Um, here's a clip about Larry Hoover um, from ABC7, Chuck Out. The performer is Kanye West on stage giving a concert for a killer, the convicted Chicago street gang racketeer Larry Hoover, who is currently serving multiple life sentences. Even at age 71, law enforcement officials say Hoover is considered the capo of the gangster disciples. Kanye West and fellow rapper Drake last night here at the Los Angeles Coliseum performing for this cause, emblazoned on concessions for sale, Free Hoover, Larry Hoover, considered by authorities to be Chicago's most powerful and bloodthirsty living gangster. Hoover now serving six life sentences here at the Supermax prison in Colorado for his role as the murderous chairman of Chicago's ruthless gangster disciples. Larry Hoover was the undisputed leader of the largest monolithic gang in the nation. Hoover, as guest of honor in absentia, doesn't sit well with Ron Safer, former assistant U.S. attorney in Chicago who convicted him in 1997 of murder, conspiracy, extortion, and money laundering. Hoover's gang was doing $100 million a year in illicit business, and Safer says killing hundreds of people along the way. That was the driving force behind the largest murder total that the city of Chicago has ever known. The majority of those tied to the gangster disciples. Here in 2018, Kanye West asked President Trump to commute the killer's sentence, but nothing came of that. So last night's fundraiser was streamed live to more than 240 nations on Amazon Prime Video from the University of Southern California venue. It is hard to imagine that the persons who are running that university and allowing their facilities to be used to benefit this kind of a criminal know the history behind Larry Hoover. In a statement to the ABC7i team, USC said the Coliseum is a public venue and that the university appreciates causes and viewpoints from all perspectives. Amazon officials did not reply to our request for comment on why they provided a global platform for a convicted murderer and Chicago gang leader. Hoover's attorney also did not respond. I know we're wrapping up this episode of Chicago Hill, and I'm going to definitely say that um, we need to make sure that um, that we get in the head of Larry Hoover and and find out exactly how this person thinks. You know, we have to find out how he thinks. I think that he's got some solutions that um, and some connections to the street that we have to figure out how 
we can um, deal with the problems that we're seeing. Yes, um, I really think that they should utilize him. I mean, he, he knows the, the inner workings, though he has said recently that he's had no connections with what's going on in, in Chicago um, over the years. Uh, and many people believe that because they say a lot of these young people who are involved in the gang activity, the drugs and, and the, the guns, um, that they're operating without leadership. And that's why there's been just murdering of, of, of children and, and just, you know, it, it just is completely out of control um, because they don't have leadership. Um, so yeah, you have, you have a lot of people who think Larry Hoover could be of some help, um, to this new generation of, uh, gangster disciples and, and the, the drug trade on, in Chicago and the guns. Um, yeah. But, but, but what is Larry Hoover going to do if, if he gets, I mean, that, that, that's the point is, is, is because i don't hear him saying let's disband the gang i don't want to be in charge of anything let's not sell drugs let's uh feed people i mean you know this is not the black panthers okay? yeah, that's a good that's a good that's a good point it's black panthers this is not the black panthers but to answer your question larry hoover has since said that he totally I have long since renounced my association with any and all criminal organization and their membership. That's what Larry Hoover sent to the federal courts. So he says he's no longer affiliated and he actually renounced all of his associations with this, um, with this gaming organization. I, you know, I, I, I guess that that makes sense. Uh, I'd want to see how much he sticks by that when he gets out. Well, here's the other thing. Even Malik, I don't know if he's getting out. Yeah, even yeah, if he, that's the other thing. Man. Federal prison, he still has to serve state time. He's got life in state prison too. So he's not getting out, right? Now, and, but, but I, that's why we still have to use him and people have a right to advocate for him to get out but i still think that there's no reasons many times we cut our nose off to spite our face and so mm. he's like we got him we're locking him up we put him in a hole there's no use for him anymore i don't know if that's the case i'd like to see him make some videos he doesn't need to get out of prison for that let's make some videos telling kids what this what what it would get right yeah right so i again i don't know he he says all these things and we think he'd do all these things well and there's no time like the present just because you're in jail doesn't mean your people aren't killing each other uh maybe help with that before you think about getting out well I figure it doesn't look like he's going to be getting out. Um, so why not? I, I like that idea of doing videos and actually uh, talking to the masses, especially the kids out there who have gone into this sub economy. Um, Does he do interviews? Maybe we should have him on here to talk with us sometime. Oh, I, I, you know, I think that, um, Absolutely right. I think that Malika, you, you did use the word sub economy. I want to make sure that we um, use that clearly and not the black economy. I think um, that's what people call it, the black economy. Uh, no, I, I don't subscribe to it being the black market. No more. <laughs> no, the sub economy. Uh is is run by again i say this is bigger than larry hoover all so, that was going down was 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 bigger than him and and he he took the fall for it all 200 years federal and then he's got the state 
I mean, he pretty much took the fall for, for, for everything. It, it, it let a lot of people higher up than him off the hook. I don't know that he took a fall for everything. We continued jailing black people at a good clip. So it's not like he, you know, like met the quota. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So he, uh, I mean, he got a lot of blame, but he also ordered a lot of murders. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what the limitation ought to be on if you tell people to go kill someone, how many years you get per each murder you order. But again, I think we're all on the on the same page in terms of the fact that uh, somebody in that situation, if they feel like uh, they don't want to be remembered as a murderer and a gangster, but they want to be that, you know, they want their legacy even out of prison to be trying to save some lives. Uh, I think that that's possible, and I would hope that um, you continue, Representative Ford, encouraging some um, some way to bring this individual back into the into the conversation that society is having. Because I agree, does he does have an important perspective? Yeah, I appreciate that, Mark. And you know, we we have to look at our prisons as places institutions with a purpose. And that's, and it's got to be for the common good. You know, people could lose, lose their freedom, but Lord knows when we have a person like a Jeffrey Dahmer and people that does, uh, people that do these big, uh, what is, heinous crimes, they want to study their brain, you know? We can't let these people just sit and in these prisons and not deal with them. They have a debt that they have to pay to society. And as mm -hmm. you said, maybe videos. But Malika, wrap us up. <laughs> well, I, I am in agreement. Let's talk to Larry Hoover. Um, I, I think he wants to do some good. I mean, he he wants to end his story, his legacy. I think he wants to end it doing some good. And um, and the Robert Cremos out there and what, what was the other gentleman, the mass shooter in Buffalo and Dylan Roof. I mean, you have these these young men get into their minds, figure out what the hell, you know, find out who they were affiliated with. I mean, you, you got to turn this into something that's going to help in the future is what I say. And um, Let's ban those assault rifles. I would love it if we were like Japan and had no guns. Oh Lord, that's a good. Rap. I would love. I would love it. <laughs> I would love it. But I know that I, that's Pollyanna of me to think that. But let's at least, you know, get get the uh, war weapons off the streets because it's just not needed. It's not needed. Well, this has been another episode of Chicago Hill. Um, stay tuned for the next episode with Malika, Lashawn, and Mark, the white man. <laughs> Mark would say, don't be stupid.